when I started working with Tyson, I thought, I know exactly well, God put me through this because I'm now in a position to know and see the signs and know how someone's feeling, know what they don't want to hear in that moment. I could tell when Tyson was walking down the stairs what type of mood he was in. That was a difficult one. How did you start that journey with Tyson? So that fight that I was saying about when I done my first world title fight at 24, mm -hmm. fight week, Tyson come down for the full fight week and saw me doing some work with Billy Joe and I, he was a bit like, started asking questions and and uh, I think was just impressed with what he sort of saw. He knew before that Billy Joe was sort of down at the weight, so while people looked and went, oh, that was a bad performance, that was Ben's fault, he already knew the situation before the fight took place. And then we were sort of in contact and then me and Billy Joe went over to Marbella for a training camp. Billy Joe said to me, do you mind if Tyson comes over? I said, no, no problem. And when he come over, after the first session, he was like, right, do you want to be my new coach? And I was like, most people at 24, 24, or 25, one or two, 24, I think, yeah, uh, would be like, yeah, you know, 100%. I was like, whoa, take your time. Like, you don't have to rush into a decision like this. We can keep working. If you're happy with it, then we'll see. If not, you know, you don't have to. This was when he was 28 stone? Yeah. And he was actually a little bit lighter at the time. He gained some weight after this. And... I sort of said, you know, you achieved a lot with your uncle, like, you don't have to rush into any decisions. And then, after a few sessions, he had already made his mind up, you know? Um, and then he had to go back. The plan was to, to go, for him to go back to England, sort a few bits out, then come back over and carry on training. Never happened. He went even heavier. Um, we was in contact bits and bobs, and he just randomly messaged me one day in the gym and was like, I'm ready, are you ready? I was like, ready for what? He's like, I'm ready to start. Like, I said, what? So you want me to, you want to commit to me being your trainer? He was like, yep, this, that, and the other. And I was up and had a fighter helping Tony Bellew at the time prepare for the David Hay fight. Big guy, love Tony. Show yeah. to Tony. And um, I was like, right, so I'm staying in Sheffield for a week or two weeks or whatever it was. I can't remember. I was like, I can meet you over at Hatton's, which is about halfway, um, to do some sessions three times a week or whatever. So we started off doing that. After a couple of weeks, he was like, look, I need to do this full time. So then I moved in with him and I remember turning up at the house <laughs> and uh, knocking on the door. I didn't know this at the time, but like probably a year down the line or 10 months down the line, I was talking to Paris and she was like, he never told me. He was <laughs> <laughs> Just knocked on the door. He was like, oh, by the way. Ben's moving yeah, in. Yeah, she was like, what? Uh -huh. uh, some stranger moving in. Like, Was she just happy though that it was getting help? It must have been a difficult time for seeing him, a big, strong man, king of the world. Klitschko won all the belts, had all the money, had all the fame, but then hit the biggest depression in his life. And I always use Tyson Fury as an example how when you achieve those goals and you think it's going to complete you, it's going to fulfil all the emptiness when you realise when you get it, that it ain't fuck all, and that's when people can slip. But for a man to come back from 28 stone and achieving, you're a massive part of that. So I take my hat off to you. I don't know if you get the credit that you deserve for actually what you've done and to absorb all that energy, to feel mm. those emotions and to go through that journey as well because when he's struggling, you then struggle. So it's then your job to give him that inspiration. When he was talking about getting back to fights and stuff, what were you thinking seriously when he was 28 stone? Were you thinking, mm, did you have doubt? Or were you thinking it's Tyson Fury? Like, his mindset is different. I see it, other people who see things see it. Like When he says something, he means it. People don't necessarily get it. So when he was saying to you, I'm coming back, Anybody else at 28 Stones thinking, nah, you're full of shit? What were you thinking? Yeah, at the time, he had he had some doubts. And I remember sort of um, at one point, he said, I think this is the first time he was over in my bay. He was like, my biggest worry is doing a comeback, getting myself back in shape, doing a comeback, just not having it because what is taking out of me, this comeback and the inactivity, getting beat or something like that. And then people go, ah, oh, it was a fluke that night against Klitschko. That was like something, I can't have that. So I need to take my time with this. And I imagine for Paris, it's probably, well, I don't know what this person's about. I've never met this person. Um, but after a little while, obviously, you get to know everybody. And I got to know Tyson more. And if I'm honest, I used to look across and think, I don't know if this is possible. But I got to know him, got to know the family. I thought, but if I can make this man happy again, that's it. Even if he doesn't box again, I've done a good job. A fucking good job. And... He was all over the place at first, and so one minute it was, I want to take four fights. Now, I took the deal on, I took the agreement 
to do this on him having four warm up fights. Um, and then there was times where he'd go, oh, forget the warm up fights. I, I don't love boxing no more because obviously it was tough. The emotions of going through a training camp, the emotions of having to lose all these all this weight, um, which was going to take time. He'd be like, oh, forget the warm up fights. I'm just going to take a big fight. If I got it, I've got it. If I ain't, I ain't. And I remember sitting around the table actually with. Um, Tyson and Paris and he said something along those lines and I sort of finished my foot put it to the side and walked into my room and I could hear through the door he went to Paris what's up with him and she went he's not here for that he's not here to have one big fight and earn some money and go oh if you do it you do it if you don't you don't I've earned a few quid off it what does it matter and uh, he came in and went what's up I went I'm not interested mate if you want to walk into what I took this agreeing to four warm up fights I said if you go you want to have one big fight like I'm not the man for this job I'm not interested like I don't care oh you'll earn a few quid not interested don't care I know I know I'm going to earn money because I know I'm good at my job Um, and I think that for him was like okay like, this person's actually in it for the long run like and it gave him a bit of confidence in what I want and not just using them yeah exactly and the initial going through the business side of things to get the, the deal for the comeback and everybody wanted a piece of it and well you've agreed to this before but then I've still got one fight with you I've still got a contract with you all of this was causing him a lot of stress because you already had all the stress of this comeback never mind all the stress of the business side of things but once he got the once he got the um the sort of That all that that sort of things in place, then a lot of the stress and worry went away. But he he had a um, so his first bar, he was like, I thought right, get him a steady bit of spine, let him move around, nothing too intense, you know, let him get used to a few things. And he wanted to spar Lucas Brown. Someone phoned up about Lucas Brown bit of sparring, and I thought. Rather him just move about. Not the Lucas Brown is great, but he can punch a bit. And I was like, let's just, you know, have a move about first. Get someone else. He, ah, I'll be all right. He won't be all right. Went back, sparred, timing, everything. Like, the things that you would think would be off, time and distance. He was just playing around. Like, everything was still there. And I thought, interesting. Um, and then as time went on, sparring more and more. But he was very up and down. And I think... Again, a big part of my job, old head on young shoulders. People wouldn't expect that type of dynamic. My thing was, I sort of used to look at it as they, they're the guidelines. If he goes above that, I know he's going to crash. If he goes below that, not good. If we can sit him in between these two guidelines, quite balanced, like we're doing well. So there'd be moments, he's very easily influenced, Tyson. Very easily influenced, like a big kid, really, at times. <laughs> and um, like you just wouldn't expect someone that big, achieve what he's achieved such a character to be so easily influenced but if you went literally I always say this if you if you he went I could run through that wall it would start off as a joke but do you know if I went I think you can all of a sudden it'd be <laughs> I can he would actually believe <laughs> mm -hmm. it you know but I used to purposely do things like he'd go I'm strong or this or that messing about and I'd go you can't do 10 reps with that weight and he'd go yeah Watch mm -hmm. this then. And I'd get that extra step out of him. Um, and then there was, I was so, I found, I, I thought it was so important to get away from home, get into warm weather, get him in a good mood to get to Marbella. Part of me taking on this job was to, with the agreement that we were going to go away to Marbella to get him away from everything, just focus on getting some, crashing a bit of weight off early, giving him time to rest and recover from crashing the weight, let his body get back to normal, then going to a warm up fight. And he was a bit against the going to my back because he's out of your comfort zone. You know he's thinking, I can do this from home. And I remember while we was having this discussion, we was getting ready to go for a run and the kids were screaming, oh, I want to come, I want to come. I was thinking, this is why, you know. And we set out, but he lives along sort of the seafront. So we went out for a run. Crashed the wind and the rain and the, everything from the sea crashing in and the kids, ah, oh, scooters broke, screaming, got a mile up the road. I was like, look, this is why I'm saying we need to get away, like just fully focus on on yourself, get doing what needs to be done rather than this will end up taking 12, 14, 18 weeks when we can get big results out of six weeks and then calming things back down. 
no, no, no. And then all of a sudden, he turned around. I booked it. Book what? We're going tomorrow. And I was like, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, and we're driving. What are we driving for? Ah, he's, he's saying this to me. Don't worry about it. This side of, of, of uh, this side, like, England will be the worst part of the journey. Once we get through to the other side, it'll be easy. I'm thinking, okay, get up in the morning, set off. Within two hours, ah, oh, let's just turn around. He's <laughs> coming. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, you said to me, uh -huh. this, this be, yeah, that's an 18 hour drive. Yeah. You said to me that England's going to be the hard part. And then once we got through to the other end, sorry, we stopped off at, um, stopped off at a petrol station. And he sort of said to me, Lis, listen, I can only apologize. You went, I just, you know, let's turn around. He's getting oh. scared. I don't know what it was. I think it was just a case of, the drive was difficult. Knew it was. It was the journey. Was like the journey. The journey. Even was, his kids and family as well. His missus is his rock as well. You know she I mean? was. She come with us. They oh, come she? with us. But we was in a car. The kids there as well. The kids were there. Yeah. <laughs> and he had he had the little one at the time screaming every time we phoned through from the car. Mm -hmm. So I was in a different car, and it was a bit like the journey. Like the first, he had already said this to me. England, the journey part of England to get down to the to the uh, Euro Tunnel was going to be the difficult part. And I felt like, you know, the first stage of this comeback was going to be the difficult part. And we got to, I think we got across actually to France and he was like, look, I can only apologise. I'll pay you, what you whatever you want for your time that you've put in. He said, but look, let's just go. He actually said, let's just go to Disneyland for a couple of days and turn around. And I was like, I didn't come here for this. Like, we're going to stick it through. Like, we're going to get there. Oh, let's see how we feel in the morning. And Tyson's brother, Huey, um... I got out of the car, face like a smack to us, and he was like, what's up with him? You was like, he's come to do what, what needs to be done. Like, we knew that this was ahead of us. We need to get there and get to work. And he was like, oh, see how we feel in the morning. Obviously, woke up in the morning, better mood, got going again. Um, and I remember, that as soon as the sun, this is my thing, get him in the sun, good environment, healthy, clean. I think it's probably a lot cleaner to live cleaner in a warm weather scenario. And... It'd be negative, 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 negative. It was almost like the sun, boof, hit the car, phone through. Oh, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I was like, this fella's off his trolley. <laughs> and once we got over there, you know, it was, uh, it was really good results. Day to day, he was always up and down. Um, but like I say, the key was to try and keep him in the guidelines. Um, and then he had the two comeback fights. How was it his first comeback fight? Were you nervous? Because there was a lot of hype about it. Yeah, I, I think... I sort of, I sort of thought we knew what to sort of expect. Like it was more about the showy event. He wasn't quite, if I'm being honest, mentally stable at that point. It was more about the event than the actual fight. Like the fight was never going to be competitive, you know. Um, but people love to criticise, you know. So people was expecting a barnstormer of a fight, and it just wasn't the case. It was a comeback fight, almost to signal, you know, positive things yeah. are ahead. It, it's going to happen. Who was it before getting in the ring? Yeah, good. One thing I say about Tyson is I I think he probably feels more pressure fighting someone that he's just completely expected to to beat than he does when he's fighting someone that people are like. Mm, I don't know if he can do this. Um, that must be that gypsy blood because Billy Joel's the same. Like, yeah, they up their levels tenfold. That nobody thinks they've got those levels, and they put that. I feel as if they two are constantly proving people wrong. Their whole boxing career, I don't think. That, even though they get the respect off a lot of people, but I think they should get a lot more for actually what they've achieved. They're still being, I think, is it both 30 and all? I don't know. They're both 30 and all. They're both, yeah. like, they're both are unbelievable for what they've achieved. And and again, but when you watch the fights, like, I don't fucking know. I'm not a coach, but you kind of see when it's the ones they expect to beat, they kind of take the foot off the gas a bit. But when it's against the big names, your clutch goes, your Canelo's coming up, like, they go through levels and the training seems to go through the roof which is a good thing but when you were there because it always seems like a showman in the changing room Tyson before a fight showing off and that was that any signs of that the first fight the comeback fight yeah to a, to a degree the comeback fight was like everybody wanted their face on camera and the changing room was full up and it was a bit of a circus really if I'm honest um, how does that irritate you? yeah because I think well nobody else matters I don't matter Nobody matters other than the fighter. I've always believed this. Like, if you want to be the star, do the fighting. Do you know what I mean? Earn it. Um, so it was a little bit of a, 
But then that was why I remember we sort of said, look, you know, the next fight's a bit more of a, not a competitive fight when he's at his peak, but during the comeback, lost a lot of weight, still had lost a lot of weight between the first fight and the next fight. You know, it was it was going to make it more of a competitive fight. That was against a guy called um, Pianetta and then Tom Schwartz. Schwartz, yeah, Schwartz. So you had Wilder, so Wilder was only the third fight, not the fourth? No, so the agreement was four warm-up fights yeah. and then... Um, even going into the Pianetta fight, it was like talk to this because Wilder come to the fight. There was talk of this Wilder fight. I openly said, you know, I think, you know, not that he couldn't win it, but you was really diminishing the percentages, like making it more narrow than it needed to be. Why would Wilder take that fight? He thought it's a name. I blow this fella away and got a good name on my record. That's mm -hmm. what he thought. Tried to get get him in quick. Because you know? looking from the outside, that you'd think it was a bit of liberty. Tyson just coming back after three years, two warm up fights, and then to fight. One of the best knockout artists, man, in the boxing game. Like, he was no mug, do you know what I mean? But then, what was your training when they took that fight? What were you thinking? Did you ever try and stop that? Were you thinking? Yeah, I'd, I openly said, like, this is a step... Too early? Yeah, like, you're just diminishing the percentages and making it closer than what it needs to be. And... He was adamant that he wants to do it, you know? This is, this is what I want to do. And... Do you think that's the, the addiction habit as well? Where not tr we spoke here, try to constantly prove people wrong, but he his self belief that he can run through a wall, yeah. he probably would. That do you think that's what he needs though? That the one that nobody thinks he could win because he's just came back to then make him progress and kick on and prove people wrong. Yeah, I don't know because right. that's a bit psychotic yeah. to then go. Well, fuck it, I'm going to take the undefeated fighter. Knocked out everybody that he's fought. Three fights back after a three-year layoff. So in terms of boxing side of things, I thought you're making this a closer fight than it needs to be. A lot more. If you just take your time and have another fight or two. Take more so time for your body to recover from the weight loss. Um, but what I will say, in terms of overall, I think it was the best thing that could have happened to him. Not the actual fight and the performance, but the pressure and the, okay, you know, I've got focus on what's ahead of me and, and the job that's coming up I've got a goal rather than losing a bit of weight got this fella that I can box I know I can beat him but there was no complete I need to be 100% focused for this whereas going into the Wilder fight I just think that that really helped his mind he had a focus had something he knew he needed to do there was a bit of pressure on him and made him mentally a lot more stable going into that fight and then obviously what happened in the fight just turned him into a megastar should have won the fight, man. Should have he should have won, won the fight. fight. Do you think that's because fight. he was in America? He was always wary of that. Always wary of that. Um, and actually, it's funny because we was like arguing. We want an English judge. We want an English judge. We want an English judge in there. One American, one one English, and one neutral. But it was the English judge that scored it a draw. 